Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. This is Abil Ahmed from Abil School of Accountancy. I really welcome all of you in my ATX course. Today we are starting ATX Finance Act 2023. I'm really fighting as usual. But this Finance Act 2023 is going to be really important. Okay. Number one thing which I'm going to right now tell you, actually this Finance Act 2023 is applicable on how many attempts? Actually, one Finance Act is applicable on four consecutive attempts. So let me first tell you this. Finance Act 2023, it is applicable on number one attempt is June 2024. Second is, September 2024, third is December 2024, and the fourth one is March 2025. Okay, now what? Now let me quickly tell you, what is the paper pattern of ATX? And I'll explain you one more thing, why I strongly believe, and statistics of ACC, they also, uh, endorse what I'm going to tell you right now. That is, out of four optional papers, ATX is one of the easiest paper to pass. It has the highest passing rate, near to approximately 50%, approximately, which is a really high percentage. So why it is carrying a, such a highest high passing rate, I'll explain that also, don't worry at all. Number one is the paper pattern of ATX paper pattern section A. You have only one question, 50 marks. Okay. Section B question to 25 marks. Question 3, 25 marks. Okay. Now let me tell you the further division of this. Question 1, 2, and three. Actually, in the entire paper, there are 20 professional marks, which means that you are left with only 80 technical marks, and believe me or not, I'll tell you a secret. Logically, they're not 80 technical marks. The technical marks are only 75. How come 75? Just wait. So your technical knowledge, I would say marks on technical knowledge. I'm writing 40, 20, and 20 professional marks. Getting professional marks is extremely easy, provided that you have seen all the lectures. That is the prerequisite to get these 20 professional marks. So 10, 20, 5 and 5. And I just said at the start, actually, ATX does not have 80 technical marks. It has only 75 technical marks. How? Actually, in section A, question 1, 35 marks are on technical knowledge and 5 marks question you will always have on ethics. And getting 5 marks on ethics, to be very honest, is very easy. Again, obviously, if you have seen all the lectures and you have properly read my notes, uh, these marks will not be a problem. So basically, the technical part of ATX is only for the 75 marks. And I believe one of this is one of the reasons why it is having the highest passing rates. Other papers, they do have 20 professional marks, but this one is not uh, stopping itself on 20. There are five marks on ethics as well. Okay, now, Another common question which majority of the students, they ask, sir, tell us what is the uh, ratio of theory in this question, in this paper, and what is the ratio of calculation? Because the majority of the student, they feel comfortable in numerics. And obviously, there is a majority of the student that do feel comfortable in theory part as well. But I'll try my best and that's the normal. Inshallah, after studying from me, you will be good 
equally in both the areas. And let me tell you one thing. A good thing is the drafting of ATX, the drafting of ATX is to be very honest. This is the easiest. Again, I would say among all four professional papers. Why it is the easiest drafting in ATX? Obviously, throughout the course, I'll be explaining that. Don't worry at all. But let me tell you the ratio. In ATX, to be very honest, you should be mentally prepared, should be mentally prepared for theoretical part, I would say, on theoretical part. You should mentally prepare. I would say it's going to be at least, I'm saying at least between 55 to 60 percent, which is a really big percentage. From 55 to 60 percent. Calc. The part of calc is, obviously, if the theory is 55, calc is 45. If the theory is 60, it's going to be 40%. So you might be thinking it's a really good, there's a paper which has a, this paper is, you can say, more inclined towards theory. But the theory part is not something which you have to, you know, memorize. Actually, the same thing which we're doing in numerics, examiner normally asks the same thing in theory as well. Because... In ATX or even in the tax paper, you cannot perform any calculation until unless you, you don't know the rules. So until unless you know the rules, only then you will be able to do the calculation. So it means in order to doing the calculation, you have to know the rules very well. So the same rules, if you know that, then you can do the calculation as well as you can write also. So the drafting is extremely easy. I'm again telling you, don't worry about that at all. And one more thing, which I always tell my students, whatever paper I'm teaching, I always teach from zero. No matter previously you have a study tax or not, no matter you, you are coming to me uh, after having a gap of four years, five years, even 10 years, no issue at all. Because your teacher is teaching you from zero means zero, okay? You are just in safe hands. Because Alhamdulillah, I have produced number of position holders all over the world. So you are in just safe hands. Don't worry at all. Now, what actually we offer you in our course, that is also very important. Because I strongly believe on a modern day teaching techniques. Now, the question is, what do you mean by modern day teaching techniques? Actually, I strongly don't believe on a very long lectures. Because if the lecture goes for, to be very honest, even for two hours, a student, they just lose their interest. They cannot concentrate consecutive two hours on the screen, especially for watching lectures. If it is movie, then obviously they can. Uh, but on lectures, it's very difficult, which I can understand. So let me tell you one thing. The entire course of ATX, entire ATX course, which you will be getting from us is just on 73 lectures. Wow. That one lecture is 45 minutes long. On average, it's going to be 40 to 45 minutes. To be very honest, 45 minutes is a very moderate time. It's not very long. It's not very short. Because, again, I would say the same thing. If, if I'm teaching you something within 200 hours or 250 hours, that's not practical for everyone. It could be practical for those students, they're full-time students, they might be giving 200 hours or 250 hours, uh, but I don't consider that as a modern, modern day teaching technique because to me is that I should deliver you each and everything in a very limited period of time rather than consuming your 200 or 250 hours. It's nothing. I'll, I'll try my best to teach you all, each and every knowledge within a very limited period of time, inshallah. I have proved that in the past so many times. And in Finance Act 2023, I'll prove again, inshallah. So number one product which you'll be getting from my course is 73 lectures. Entire course, one lecture, approximately 45 minutes long. Second, from lecture 74, it goes till 101. All would be practice videos, practice lectures. In practice lectures, actually, what do we do? 
we i completely discuss i discuss complete question from ats kaplan finance 2023 kit so in each video in each practice video there will be a one complete question and again in that one complete question the time period will be approximately 45 minutes because the main thing is i don't want to have a video lecture of 2 hours maybe even 1.5 hours because once the lecture goes i believe exceeds even 1 hour the student then you know they just pause and watch so i don't want that so product 2 which you will be getting from my course is practice videos from 74 till 101 product 3 I will give, I'll be giving you assignments, or you can say test, at least, I'm saying at least 10 tests, which means that these tests could be more than 10, but they cannot be less than 10. But what will be the procedure of the test? That's very important. When you will be, when you will reach on a point where I'm going to decide that now you are able to give the test, you have to attempt the test, number one. And second, you have to check the test by yourself. What I'm going to do, I'll give you a video lecture on that test. So you have to show the honesty. You have to attempt the test, check the test by yourself, but I'll give you a video lecture on that test. Let's say you have attempted the test and you have checked your test by yourself and you have seen the video lecture on that test as well. Still, if there are any confusions, you can always ask queries on the WhatsApp group. Always. Okay. So the fourth point you will be getting is WhatsApp support. So you will be getting a WhatsApp support. WhatsApp number will be shared with you. Fifth, that is very important also. The fifth product which you will be getting is weekly live revision classes weekly live revision classes and let me tell you one thing if you miss that weekly live revision class you should not be worried about that because on the same day recording will be uploaded on the same day recording will be uploaded so you'll be getting a recording of live revision classes as well as well product number six there are many products that is you'll be getting a smart revision wow and that is a very unique product. In a smart revision, dear students, just within 10 hours, approximately I take 10 hours or maybe sometime less. Within 10 hours, you will be getting the revision of almost entire ATX. To be very honest, entire means entire. So product number six, which you'll be getting from me, is going to be the smart revision. This is called a smart revision. This is revision of 60 hours and 80 hours. Where is the smartness that is missing? But when there is someone who can teach you the entire ATX revision just within 10 hours, smart revision. Product number seven. There are so many products. Wow. That is a dedicated mock with a debrief. And on that mock, you will be getting my personal feedback means my personal feedback where I'll tell you where you went wrong, where you were correct, how many marks you are getting. So to be very honest, if you go through all these seven products, you can easily pass it in the first attempt, inshallah. You will be having no issues at all. All you need is just go on these seven products. And there's a product number eight as well in Finance Act 2023, which I'm going to launch. That's a secret product. Only those students, they are going to enroll in my course. They will get to know what is that product number eight. Okay, now. Now, let me tell you about the slavers. Actually, what do we have in the entire course? Normally, I break the entire course in different parts. Number one is a really major part of your course is on individuals. Simply taxation for individuals. So we, we will be starting our slavers from individuals. Okay. 
like for example individual could be an employee so we'll be doing how to calculate employment income how to tax employment income individual can start let's say sole traditional partnership dividend income saving income that is in trust income even property income all these incomes we'll be covering in shall individual so taxation for individuals i'm giving the example i'm just quickly repeating it like an individual uh what will be covering i'm going to cover employment income property income dividend income interest income trading income partnership as well so in individuals basically we'll be discussing property income if individual is earning income from the property that is basically a rental income how that individual will have to pay tax let's say tax on employment income number one you will be learning how do we calculate employment income and then how to pay tax let's say saving income which is interest income dividend income sole tradition there's a possibility that you're running your individual is running his or her own business how to calculate um, let's say trading profit and how to pay tax you'll be learning that and even the partnership so basically when it comes to how do individual pay tax in uk uh, these are the sources of income which we have to cover for individuals and there could be little bit others as well we'll see that it is so one part of the entire syllabus is on individuals second after this we'll be doing capital gain tax extremely important third we'll be studying inshallah inheritance tax Board, value added tax equally important in both the papers tax and ATX and finally we'll be doing corporation tax of course corporation tax and let me tell you one thing we will all we will also be doing inshallah self-assessment for individuals as well as self-assessment for companies corporation tax so you'll be studying self-assessment for individuals as well as self-assessment for the organizations and ethics as well. So there was going to be the self-assessment for individuals as well as corporations and ethics as well. Now, as I said earlier, in today's class, obviously we'll be learning something. I'm not officially, I would say, starting the course, but let me give you a little bit idea relating to the course because we, we should study it instead of wasting time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be, we are starting our syllabus from individuals. And I have written the sequence, I've written the entire course in a sequence which I'm going to follow in my course, okay? Number one thing relating to individuals, how do individual actually they pay tax in UK, okay? So individuals in UK, they pay tax according to the tax year. Another name is fiscal year. Individuals pay tax in UK according to the tax year. Another name for the tax year is fiscal year. In UK, fiscal year starts from 6th April, ends on next 5th April. For example, if a tax year starts from 6th April 2023, it ends on 5th April 2024. Okay. If a tax year starts from 6 April 2024, then ends on 5 April 2025. How do we write this tax year? Simply 2023-24. This is how we write. 
2024-25. Okay, so individuals in UK, they pay tax according to the tax year. Just you need to know one thing. Tax year starts from 6th April and ends on next 5th April. Okay. Now another question. Does every individual will have to pay tax in uh, UK? The answer is no. Only those individuals are required to pay tax in UK, they are earning. Their earning is more than 12,570, which is called personal allowance. So wh whoever is earning more than 12,570 will have to pay tax. If you if someone is earning less than 12,570, then there's no need to pay tax. So it means the threshold income if someone is earning more than 12,570, only that person will have to pay tax. So that is called personal allowance. Personal allowance. Which is 12,570. So they uh, did not change the personal allowance. So it is 12,570, Finance Act 2023. So if someone is earning more than 12,570 in the entire tax year, only that individual will be paying tax. Now the question arises, how do they pay tax? Let me first tell you, tax rates for the non-saving income, okay? What are the examples for the non-saving incomes? I'll tell you examples as well, don't worry at all. Let me first tell you non-saving incomes, non-saving income. What are the examples of non-saving incomes? It's very, very simple. Let me tell you. You just come here. These are the sources of income for individuals. Okay. Just a minute. They are in front of you. So if somebody is asking you, what are the so sources of income they fall in non-saving? So just exclude these two. Saving income is interest income. Obviously, it is not uh, non-saving income. And dividend income is dividend income. So just you need to exclude these two income. Except these two income, rest all of the incomes out of these six, they fall in non-saving income. They are treated as non-saving income. Even you are getting a pension income, it also treated as a non-saving income. So non-saving income means someone is earning a rental income, employment income, trading profit, profit is coming from the partnership. Even though someone is getting a pension income, that falls in a non-saving income. So first, actually, we're learning. Let us start learning. How do we calculate tax on non-saving income? So basically, UK taxation authorities, which is HMRC, they give you the bands how the bands they work, let me tell you that. So number one is for non-saving income, basic rate band. The limit is from one till 37,700. And the tax rate is 20%. For non-saving income, the tax rate is 20%. If someone is a basic rate taxpayer, uh, his or her income actually falls in basic rate band, will be paying 20% tax. Second, higher rate band. Actually, the higher rate band limit in Finance Act 2023, they have changed. 37,701, it goes till 125,140. In previous Finance Act, it used to be 150. Now they have reduced uh, the higher rate band limit to 125,140. So applicable tax rate is 40%. But this 40 is not directly applicable. Let's say if someone is having a taxable income of 60,000. First, we'll be utilizing the basic rate band and after that, the taxable income which is over and above 37,700, on that income only, we will apply 40%. Third and last, that is additional rate. 
Additional rate means if someone is having income more than taxable income more than one lakh twenty five thousand one forty one plus above there is no limit. Applicable tax rate is forty five percent. So if someone is having income more than one lakh twenty five thousand one forty, so any income which is over and above one lakh twenty five thousand one forty, applicable tax rate is forty five percent for the non saving income. Let me give you. A, let's solve example one. Assuming there is Mr. A having employment income of, let's say, 90,000, okay? And the requirement is very simple. You are just required to calculate uh, tax payable. We just try to calculate income tax liability for Mr. A. Required is calculate income tax liability. Number one, we know that employment income is a non-saving income. How do we actually calculate uh, income tax liability? Just see. Employment income, which is a non-saving income. As I mentioned earlier, only those individuals are required to pay tax in UK. They're, they're earning in the entire tax year is more than 12,570. And 12,570 is a personal allowance. So from employment income, you will be deducting personal allowance. Which is 12,570. After deducting personal allowance from the employment income, you will get taxable income. The income on which you have to apply the tax. That is 77,430. So this is your taxable income. And let me tell you one more thing. Number of questions we'll be solving on ACCA CB platform as well. So you should not be worried about anything. We'll be getting exactly the same simulation. I'll provide you the same simulation so that which you are going to face an exam. So obviously we'll be using this ACCA CV platform a lot. So you should not be worried about anything. Now the taxable income is 77,430 and we need to apply tax rates. How do we apply? First, dear students, you have to use the basic rate. You cannot directly jump on a higher rate band. Once you have utilized, you have consumed the basic rate band, only then you can go for a higher rate, which means that Basic rate band, obviously non-saving income. Employment income is a non-saving income. 37,700, applicable tax rate is 20%. I think 7540, let me check. That's what I believe, oh, that's correct. Now listen and listen carefully. Dear students, the taxable income is 77,430. The taxable income is 77,430. From this 77,430, you have taxed 37,700. So actually, how much income falls in higher rate band? You just need to do one thing. From this taxable income, which is 77,430, just deduct 37,700. So 77,430, Minus 37,700, I'm getting 39,000, 39,730. That falls in higher rate band. Obviously, the non saving income. Applicable tax rate is 40%. So let me take this. I'm getting 15,892. Obviously, if you add these amounts, 37,700 plus 39,730, it gives me 77,430. And your income tax liability, your income tax liability, little bit down, 7,540 7, plus 15,892, your income tax liability is 23,432. This is your income tax liability. This is your income tax liability. This is your income tax liability, okay? Now listen. 
since it is just the first lecture, I really want to stop my lecture over here, but I just want to give you a little homework and I really want every one of you to solve that. If you're watching this lecture on my YouTube channel, I really appreciate it. You just put your answer of my question too. Uh, otherwise, next lecture, inshallah, I'll start from question two. Question two is, let's say, I'm giving you the employment income. 60,000. And I really want every one of you to calculate income tax liability for me. Calculate income tax liability. Okay. I really want every one of you to calculate income tax liability. Another thing is, if you really want to uh, get in touch with uh, my admin, that is, you want to contact Abilu School of Accountancy, let me tell you the WhatsApp number of admin. ASA, Abil School of Accountancy. WhatsApp number for students, they are outside Pakistan. That is 0092 333 666214. So 333-666214 for students, they are outside Pakistan. Those they are within Pakistan, 0333-666214. These are ASA admin number. You can always contact for more details. So I really want every one of you to share the answer of this question too. Inshallah, uh, the second lecture, I'll start from this. So anything else relating to the taxation course, if you want to ask relating to ATX, relating to tax, even you need advice relating to which paper you really want to give, uh, you, you are more than welcome. You can ask all sorts of questions, obviously relating to your study in ACC, uh, nothing else. So one more thing which I always tell to my students and especially those who are watching this lecture as well, uh, from my heart, from the bottom of my heart, I always say to all of my students and obviously those who are just uh, watching this lecture, even on the uh, YouTube, I just want to say one thing. Have a nice life. Uh, I don't want to say have a nice day. Because the life is itself very short and day is very, very short. So that is why I really pray that you should have a nice life. So thank you very much for watching this lecture. Have a nice life.